thing that the mind blowing numbers that get thrown around, like even just the idea that that there that the 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 DTCC is insured for sixty seven trillion dollars, right? Like yeah. even just that figure alone blows my mind because the world economy is one hundred and thirty trillion dollars. Yeah. Uh, do you really think it's an actual possibility that because as far as I'm I'm aware now you can correct me if I'm wrong on this the the DTCC their like insurance policy is essentially the Fed printing money right yep. is that is that pretty accurate okay uh, well they 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 have uh, investments they they have low risk investments so they take dues from their members from from people who who clear their books through their clearinghouse so they take dues from them and they invest that into uh, low risk um, stocks and and bonds and things and that's where it's essentially the 67 trillion lies and if that gets drained that's when the federal reserve has to start you know, spinning up the printers. Um, and the last time that happened essentially was in 2008 when uh, the mortgage market collapsed mm. and, you know, the, the, the big insurers, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, AIG, you know, they had trillions of dollars of policies out there and they're not expecting to have to pay them all at once. That was, that's never, you know, if you're insur- if everyone all of a sudden gets in a car accident tomorrow, your insurance company is going bankrupt. <laughs> they're, they're, not, they're not designed for every car in the world to all of a sudden bonk into each other and, you know, need, fr- need a frame job. And, and so, you know, the insurance that exists isn't expecting that a hundred different meme stocks are all of a sudden get margin called and they're going to owe trillions upon trillions upon trillions. I mean, if if the stock hits hundred thousand dollars a share, and there's the forty five million physical shares out there, you're looking at forty five trillion dollars, right? But there's eight hundred million shares that could possibly exist. So I don't see how anyone gets out of this without the Federal Reserve printing money to to cover all in the required by law to do this because if they don't print the money the banks dry up if the banks dry up no one you know no one no one has any money in their savings accounts and and you know the fdic and the the federal insurance all of a sudden gets drained and you know you you don't have people getting car loans no one can get credit cards no one can get small business loans and the entire world economy just grinds to a halt so they have no choice but to print so essentially, I think of my GameStop stock as just being like a federally backed security. <laughs> that, you know, it's, it might as well just be a currency at this point. It's, 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 you know, safest I think, lottery ticket ever. Exactly. It's, you know, <laughs> I, I think about you know the price of Bitcoin. And, you know, there's 20 million Bitcoins in existence. Why is it worth fifty thousand dollars? It doesn't produce a dividend. It doesn't produce, you know. Uh, goods or services. It's just this digital thing that can be erased by a solar mass ejection ejection. And whereas my GameStop stock has it's just as rare. It actually produces something. And, you know, it's in as it's in demand and being held on to just as tightly as like, you know, someone would a bag of gold. And, you know, why not why not invest the cost of an airline ticket into it? This is not financial advice. This is not financial advice. It's what I'm doing. Yeah. This is, <laughs> I just always like to clarify. Yeah. <laughs> <in this situation. laughs> but like, I still like part of my brain just goes, this isn't possible. Like the yeah. SEC will step in. The government will step in. The brokers will refuse to pay. Like there's, there's, yeah. there's suggestions that like eToro have said, uh, like in people have read like the terms and conditions of like broker of like retail brokers, like, uh, eToro, where they've said, "Yeah, we we reserve the right to just cancel all trades, um, regardless of of when they happened, if we want." And people are yeah. just like, uh, "I'm just waiting. I'm waiting to get screwed over." Basically, I'm waiting to yeah. have, to have like done the understanding of the rules and to have like done my homework and understood what's going on here, and you know, try made a made a vaguely educated guess that this is probably going to go up yeah. and then just be told, well, you know, if it was a hedge fund doing this, yeah, they'd get their money, but you no, you're not getting it. You know, that's, that's, I, th- I think a big concern with a lot of people, the, 
what we have going for us is one, there's a lot of international investors invested into this right now. A lot of retail investors, a lot of big firms are internationally invested into, into GameStop. And if the government U.S. government does something shady where they they shut down trading or broker some sort of you know settlement or something. It will cause a lot of the globe to lose faith in the U.S. markets. And after the shady stuff that happened in 2008, I don't think we can crash the global economy a second time, <laughs> and you know only let those bad performers be the ones that that get away with it. Uh, and the other benefit I think the the long side has is that there are big wealthy funds that are on the side of GameStop uh, and they want their money. <laughs> they want, they don't, they don't, they don't only want their money. They want to see Citadel die. Mm. And uh, I don't know if you saw any of the, the hearings, the congressional hearings they've done over the last couple of months, but, one of the interesting ones on the 17th was they spent several minutes basically at the multiple firms testifying like, yeah, Citadel can die tomorrow. We can take up their slack. <laughs> we're, we're like, they're basically saying, let them die. We can take over. And in 2008, you know, they had the meeting of the five or I should say, I think it was actually three investment banks. Uh, there were five at the time. There was J.P. Morgan, Merrill Lynch, uh, Goldman Sachs, Lehman Brothers, and uh, Bear Stearns. And Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers weren't invited. <laughs> the, the other ones got together. They're like, "Hey, hey, uh, SEC and 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 uh, FTC, let them die. We can take over." And like, this is how they're they are so up shit creek that there's nothing you can do to save them. So let them die. We'll gobble up, gobble up their assets for pennies on the dollar and uh, we'll just jettison the garbage. And the government, you know, the Federal Reserve and the government were like, okay, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and I, I think that, that, you know, they're probably looking at the books right now and probably saying there's no way Citadel can make it out of this. And there's probably strategy meetings happening between some big firms and big investment banks about, you know, letting them die. And uh, uh, I do think it's interesting that we're seeing margin calls, lots of margin calls happening this week from international uh, brokerages and investment banks and, uh, uh, and not so much from the U.S. Because I think the international ones are a little smarter <laughs> than, than the Americans are. <laughs> Americans are like, well, well, you know, they say the check is in the mail and the national ones are like, get the hell out now while you can. <laughs> and uh, so they're, you know, I think it was Futu in Hong Kong has announced mm -hmm. that they, they got margin called or are going to get margin called based on their GameStop position. Uh, and, you know, they're probably the smart ones. They're like, get out now while the price is $200 a share. Then, you know, after the 15th one has been called and the price is $50,000 a share. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, follow me on Twitter, or sign up to our mailing list. Thanks a lot to our sponsor, ExpressVPN, the number one most trusted VPN. Get lightning fast connectivity with servers in 160 locations across 94 countries. Keep your browsing privacy safe with ExpressVPN and get a 35% discount on 12 months of ExpressVPN when you follow the link in the description below. Don't forget my book is now out and available to order on Amazon and on bookshop.org. That's Brexit, the Establishment Civil War. And most importantly, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.